the big question is what is China going to do to the silver markets and actually we know that China is a very heavy consumer of silver and other commodities and has a major influence on the markets but also sometimes you can't really go by the physical buying you can look up all the statistics in the world and sometimes physical buying and physical demand are not really what is setting the price in the markets now yes I know there's like all this story about naked shorting of silver but sometimes there's other real factors going on because people will get out of metals investments if they need cash to just pay certain things due to liquidity crunches so you know that happens quite often besides when there's other problems going on in the economy and sometimes it's not all the conspiratorial side of things although people don't want to hear that because I did mention that not only is silver down but also palladium, platinum, copper, lead, zinc, aluminum and the Dow and the S&P and oil and the NASDAQ I mean not today today things sprang up a little bit but over the last month everything is down but the big question is what's gonna happen how is China gonna influence silver prices now one of the things coming up is that um, or actually it's been rumored to be that the Chinese officials are actually working together with the Federal Reserve in concert to actually change the exchange rate between the Chinese yuan and US dollar which in effect will greatly devalue the dollar so that is one reason to hold gold and hold silver major major reason now I know they talked about that 40 percent that 40 percent devaluation in the dollar that you know I I think they're getting that from an inference from what happened in 1933 when they basically forced people to give up gold for twenty dollars and the government revalued it at 35 that was about a little over 40 percent that was about 40 percent change in value so people are making an inference from that I don't think it's going to be quite that drastic but the US dollar is going to start gradually losing its world reserve currency status and that does not mean it's going into Zimbabwe inflation but they're looking to basically reduce the debt and I guess one way to do that is to devalue the dollar but just remember what happened to the British pound when it lost the world reserve currency that it lost the world's reserve currency in the 1930s its status as a world reserve currency it did not go away it did not go away it was still with us it was still there but it just wasn't as powerful as it once was and that is probably what's going to happen with the status of the US dollar so your silver investments gonna go up but is it gonna go to like crazy prices it all depends on Ben Bernanke now this actually is a story from the silver doctors and I I'm gonna show this story uh, just give it as a reference but down below in the notes I'm gonna actually post a link from the actual Reuters story that this is referring to but not display the Reuters story in any way at all but this gives a very short synopsis of what's going on but if you want more detail the Reuters story goes into more detail but I don't think you really need to know the detail but that much it's just at the basis of it because it almost gets into like giddy rumors you know it's like really who cares that much but the gist of this is that they said the US lets China bypass Wall Street for Treasury US Treasury orders this is a real game changer as the primary dealers in other words JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs will no longer be able to front run China and flip treasuries at virtually zero risk China bidding directly on Treasury auctions is a massive revenue loss for the primary dealers see JB Morgan and Goldman Sachs and a strong indication of the stranglehold the creditor China holds on a debtor with the United States as China is clearly dictating the terms as its continuing support of US debt and deficits apparently the Treasury does not wish to see the Fed 
purchasing 100% of its issuances in 2012 and 2013, as the Fed is already monetizing, monetizing 62% of all Treasury issuances. That's very revealing, which means the end game is getting pretty near, getting pretty near. China will now bypass Wall Street when buying U.S. government debt and go straight to U.S. Treasury in what the Treasury first ever direct relationship with foreign government according to documents viewed by Reuters. Now I'm going to actually post a link to the Reuters story. I'm not going to display it at all. Uh, this was a nice little synopsis of the story itself from the Silver Doctors. Now I also want to point out in the case of China China can probably just do what the hell it wants because that means to me I don't even know why they'd be purchasing US treasuries in the first place unless they could purchase them and buy materials in the world cheaply now like I stated the one thing that really seems to be no matter what happens in the world economy and if QE happens QE3 happens or not if the Chinese money is appreciated in value our US dollar is going down in value. I don't know if, you know, it's not going to zero. The sky's not going to fall. But that's going to mean the metal's going to go up by default right there. They have to. They have to. Now, there's another story on the horizon. And I saw this. I know it's, it's, I like using Business Insider a lot. And, um, <laughs> actually, I find that Business Insider seems to be. A better source of information, I'm going to actually plug, I don't work for them or nothing, but they seem to be a better source of information that these people that go on Alex Jones that wear pastor uniforms and stuff that go around and say, I have inside information direct from the elite, and I'm going to tell you what he said. I'm going to give you all their secret plans because they told me only about them. Now you can buy them on my DVD. Well, yeah, that's great. I have a cure-all, and it comes in a bottle, and I will sell it to you. That's great. Anyway, Business Insider talks Mark Faber. I call him like a, the god of the business world. I like this guy. I actually like him even better than Jim Rogers, although I like Jim Rogers a great deal. I think he's very good. Mark Farber guarantees a global recession. Now, I'm going to actually put my thinking on this, too. Because when you hear that, you think metal prices crash. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Normally, when industry goes down, metal prices crash. In an interview on CBS, CNBC's Fast Money Halftime Report, Mark Farber, the gloom, boom and doom report stated that a global recession in the final quarter of this year 2012 fourth quarter 2012 or any time next year is certain i think we could have a global recession either in q quarter 4 2012 or early 2013 that is a distinct possibility when asked what the odds were reply faber required 100 percent you know, I like people give me odds 100%, but what does that mean? What does that mean? You know, on the surface, it means the metal prices are going to be depressed. But that doesn't necessarily mean that could be the case. That's considering everything else being equal. What happens if China appreciates their money? And what happens if Ben Bernanke acts upon this? In other words, right now we're seeing... Global PMI numbers from J.P. Morgan's uh, Global Manufacturing Index that are increasing. Yeah, they're going down in Europe, but they're looking good in the United States and China. What happens if these numbers are going down? Ben Bernanke will act. That's what I'm thinking. See, he says this, too. See, if you're taking one thing out of the context, and it's probably true, we're going to have this global recession. He's probably going to print more money, and the dollar is going to be devalued. Uh, against the uh, Ch uh, Chinese yuan. So, he also called for a potential stock market crash later this year if the markets do not come down. But since the markets have dropped later, he does not expect a 1987 style crash as previously mentioned. Despite his doubt of a market crash, Farber is guaranteeing a recession within the next year and a half, which is an astonishing call. But that also tells me. The indicators for that recession are going to be in place before it happens. 
and I think that Ben Bernanke is going to act. And then you put that in concert with what's going to happen with the Chinese money. Uh, and also, since um, you know the power of J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs is going to be greatly diminished by them not being able to front run on the Chinese in the Treasury market, uh, I, that's going to affect their bottom line. Now, I can also see what the twist of the silver people are going to state. We got them on the run. We got them on the run. See, I still expect silver to actually go way the hell up. But as it's going up, and, you know, they report problems with Goldman Sachs maybe having diminished profits and also J.P. Morgan having diminished profits, they're going to say it's because of their short position on silver. And maybe it has nothing to do with that, you know. I mean, how the hell would you really know? You know, I actually, I'm an accountant type person. If you don't show me numbers and facts, I don't really care. That's like, you know, people asking people for loans. Or people going to other people have lots of money and asking them for money. Because I got this plan. Well, you know what? You show me on paper what the plan is. You show me where you have contracts lined up for customers. That it's going to provide, you know, income stream to come forward. Well, I know their game. Their game is to push up this metal and really get the heat and the flames pushing up as high as possible when, um, you know, the, the, the top is near so they can get the hell out and go short. That's their game. I kind of pointed that out with uh, some other videos I did. I've been, I've been actually watching this for a while. I've been watching this for a while. I'll mention another name, but uh, the guy that actually was calling uh, $100 silver back in... Uh, April, that was Bob Chapman, he was all over the, uh, you know, what you call it, Alex Jones show, stating, we got him on a run, we got him on a run. Well, I went into a little bit of, on his background, and I've noticed that, I don't know if it was from partly from me, or what, but I noticed on Kiko, some months later, there was a lot of, uh, you know, comments back and forth about little escapades he was involved in. And, you know, Alex Jones is totally aware of this garbage. So, man, I'm telling you, watch these people with these uh, alternative media. They're about as bad as the major media. But, you know, a good source actually is, um, I want to stay, you know, this is major media source. I don't know. It's probably coming from, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where it's coming from. I think it's coming from a major um, outlet. The, inside, the uh, Business Insider. Actually, they have a number of good stories, and I found that they've actually gave much better information than, you know, these people coming in on, um, you know, they got the banksters on the run, you know, Max Kaiser. I don't know what the hell that guy ever says. I stopped listening to him at all because he doesn't give me any kind of information. Now, I also want to state about, you know, the bottom for silver and gold. I don't know. I don't think it's here yet. I think it's got more of a slide yet, even though it's like starting to look like better. You start getting more relaxed. It's going to be a problem. I think when uh, Greece actually exits the euro, that was another Mark Farber suggestion. When they actually ex exit the euro, that's going to probably have some repercussions on the metals markets. And what we need is two things to push up the metals markets, QE and also um, the fact that China will revalue its appreciate its money, which means the devaluation of the US dollar. Those two things are are gonna happen. And you know now if Mark Farber's talking about a global recession uh before the end of twenty twelve or maybe early twenty thirteen by the latest, well I think the indicators are gonna be there showing that the manufacturing index is down. See the manufacturing index globally is actually going up the last two months. So actually, the last three months. So Ben Bernanke is not acting on that. The figures don't look that bad. But if the figures are going down, he probably will act and he'll probably have the QE3. So um, that is actually something that Mark Farber's kind of act, you know, keeping the gold for. Keeping the gold for. So, you know, it's actually going to probably turn out that the metals are going to go up. But once they start getting up to, if they get up over 50, um, I actually, you know, it depends on a number of geopolitical events, and, you know, the other thing I see on the line that's supposedly going to happen is the war with Iran. You know, they got this Dr. Kent Moores uh, talking about 
oil possibly being at $200 a barrel by July 1st. I don't know if that's some kind of garbage or what. He's got all these qualifications, but a lot of people expect an attack on Iran by the summer. So, you know, if that happens, gold will go up too, right? Besides the oil. So, I mean, there's a number of events. See, right now they're printing a lot of stories that gold is going to go down to 1200 I don't know about that garbage. You know, I noticed they every day seem to have these stories and they pull them off the shelf when things are looking like bad and it's they're never exactly right. They're never exactly right. I don't think it's going to go that low, but I don't think the bottom's in, in yet. I don't think silver's going to go down to 21, but I don't I think it's going below 26. And yes, I agree. David Morgan is is a pretty straight shooter, but you got to watch very carefully what he says and actually read between the lines. He does give you some pretty good hints. That guy's not a bad guy, and neither is Mike Maloney. So if actually those two people that are the big stalwarts in the silver community, uh, they should be respected and listened to. Because even if, say, you bought silver now, I mean, I don't have a crystal ball. Uh and it goes down, you're still going to make out. You're still going to make out. But also remember, you know, if a person has $10 million invested in gold, you know, it's they're not necessarily going to get a triple, you know, inside of a year or some garbage like that, as some of these people predict. I mean, you actually listen to Bob Chapman back in uh, February. He was hinting at $3,200 gold. We're not going to see that this year. We might see 2,000 or more. That would be, you know, once things heat up, the thing's going to take off like crazy. Because, like I stated before, um, I don't know, making this too damn long, but i got to state a couple things over and over again. What actually caused the metals to actually explode in 2012? They were talking about the anticipation of quantitative easing all during the last quarter of 2011. They thought Ben Bernanke was going to announce QE3 pretty soon. So there was this anticipation in the market. So silver went from 26 up to 37. Gold went from, I think, 1522 to 1760. And major gains, right? Well, that's what will happen. That's what will happen. When, say, QE actually happens and there's a devaluation of the U.S. dollar versus the Chinese yuan, it's going to make up for lost time. And I don't think, see, this downturn in the industry is going to be met with policy by Ben Bernanke. See, that's where I think the, the difference is going to be. The metals might not be down, as you know, like people think. But like I stated before, once it gets like up to new record highs and stuff, be cautious, be cautious, especially watch the tone of the uh, certain people, you know. When they start really saying, they start screaming, J.P. Morgan's on the run. Oh, boy. I just call him out for that garbage. <laughs> I think we should call Eric Sprott and ask him what's going on. I'd like to ask the questions. Boy, yeah, I'd have a few questions for that guy. Anyway, over and out.